Let's, uh, as, as usual, let's begin by reading what's going on. Trout and carp are types of fish. A lake contains a number of trout. At a certain time, 10 carp are introduced into the lake and start eating the trout. Jerks. Uh, as a consequence, the number of trout n decreases according to that equation. Where t is the time in months after the carp are introduced. The population of carp, p, increases according to that equation. It's a differential equation. And then they start to ask a series of questions. Just pause for a moment. <coughs> what makes this question hard? Well, <laughs> when you have a look, it's in question 16. You think, oh right, this is at the end of the paper, right? You got 1 to 10 multiple choice, 11 through 16 are your extended response. They've tucked this in here, this monster of a question, because they want to make this a challenging, as challenging as a two unit exponential growth and decay question pretty much gets. Okay? Um, the example we looked at before with the salt water and that kind of thing, that's extension one growth and decay. Because if you have a look at the differential equation, have a look at the differential equation you have here. You see how it's just 0.02p, right? There's no p minus this or p minus that. So this is still two unit, but it's very challenging because we have not just one exponential growth situation, but we have two, right? And somehow we've got to have them interacting with each other, right? So let's start to unpack this. Part one, how many trout were in the lake when the carp were introduced? So when I say part one, there are two equations. Which is the one to do with trout? Is it n or is it p? N. It's n. Okay, so I'm going to go straight to the equation. I'm actually going to write down the equation for n. n equals, and they give us some stuff in here, 375 minus, is it 0 0.04t? Yeah. Yep. <coughs> There's my equation for the number of trout. Now they say, they use words, right? This is part of what's a, an issue in this whole topic. You're fine, Paul. Come on over. Read the words and think about what value you're going to have to put in to this equation. It says when the carp were introduced. Read carefully, what time value is that? That's time zero because it says t is the time in months after the carp are introduced. So the carp are introduced at time zero. So let's go ahead and we can work this out when t equals zero, right? When you have a look, think about what's going to happen up in that index where the index is zero. What does this whole exponential term become? One. What do you think is the most common trap that students fall into when they see, oh, zero? They say, oh, it's just zero because it's substituting zero. But it's not, of course. n equals 375 take away one. That means you had this many trout. Thumbs up? OK. I know how many trout we started with. When will the trout population be zero? Part two. Okay, so I'm still dealing with this same equation in n, bless you, right? But I'm going to substitute in something different. What am I going to substitute into this? Instead of t equals zero, I'm going to substitute in n is equal zero. That's when they're all gone. So you're going to have this, 375 minus that. That's going to equal zero. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can monkey about with this. We're going to have to rearrange. We're going to take logs of both sides. Can I let you do that? I'll give you a bit of time to, to work out your value of t. Anyone there? Oh. Yeah. What do you got for me? Uh, I got 148.173. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so every time you get an answer out after you've done all of your um, operations and manipulation, you see, have I answered the question? As of this line, I have not answered the question. It says, when will the population of trout be zero? So I need to provide something about time. So I think it would be nice and neat to say at the end, right? This will be when? Uh, after 148 months. You okay with that? Yes? Now, just a really minor note. Um, some people are going to be sort of iffy about this because if you actually sub in t equals 148 back into this equation, go ahead, you've got a calculator there, right? What do you actually get? 375 minus e to the 0.04t. 
times that. Do you get zero? Actually zero? No decimal places or anything? When you sub in 148 though, is what I'm asking. Say that again. 2.58! There are two whole trout that are still alive, right? And you're like, is this actually the answer? Okay. Now, the reason why I'm going to defend this answer, and they accept actually both if you justify it at the HSC, is because what is this? Is this actually, like at some point in time, is there going to be half a trout or 0.58 of a trout, all those kinds of things? Not really. This is just a model, right? It's just a model. It's a very good one. It's a very useful one. But we don't actually get that, you know, individual trout level of precision. It's like, well, I'm going to have that trout's going to, I'm going to tell you exactly the minute and hour that you're going to die because my model tells you this. It can't do that. It doesn't have that kind of precision. Okay. So an approximation is just fine. That was part two. What does part three ask? Can you have a look at it for me? Okay, so we actually want to get a picture of this. They actually do tell you we want a drawing, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm only going to draw a first quadrant on this. Why do you think that might be? What would the, um, what would the left hand side, the negative part of that, what would that represent in a situation like this? That, we'll have a look. What, what, on, a, on an exponential graph, I'm usually using horizontal uh, axis for t, for time. So that would be before time zero. I'm not interested in that. What about the negative axis down here? You've got negative trout, some antimatter trouts floating around in your lake. Okay, so I'm not interested in that either. Uh, <laughs> your anti trouts, they're, they're nasty. They collide with trouts and they annihilate each other. Um, so I'm only going to have the positive axis for each. Where, where do we start? How many trout do we have at the beginning? We've just worked this out in part one. 374. So I'm going to arbitrarily pick a point, make that 374. Okay. Um, after what time do we end? How many trout, sorry, how long have we gone when we say no more trout left? 148 months. So I'm going to pick a spot arbitrarily. Now I know I'm going from there to there. This is an exponential. What kind of exponential shape am I going to get? Hmm. So if I didn't put any kind of like restriction on this, right, I would say that 375 is going to move you upwards, right? And this minus on the front takes your exponential graph that you're used to thinking like this and it turns it upside down like that. So you're getting, you're getting this kind of shape, right? Does that make sense? But of course I've cut off most of that. I'm only interested in a particular domain and range because that's what makes sense in this model. So this is the component that I'm interested in. So. Whoop. There we go. Happy times. Okay.